Do not let your DNA infest this world. <laughs> Did your parents have any children that lived? Sir, yes, sir. I bet they regret that. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> I asked for subreddit suggestions yesterday. I did write them all down. Basically, we're going to jump into one of them tomorrow. I'm still deciding, basically. We're going to do r slash bad women's anatomy with wifey over on my other channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X. So if you're looking for that, then uh, the link is in the description as soon as it's up. But for today, on this channel, we're going to be jumping back into r slash Tales of Neckbeards. What a shock. <laughs> We're going to be doing the Beard of a Thousand Irritations. Continuing that saga. There's also another little bonus story right there at the front for you. If you haven't seen the previous parts of this saga, I've linked them all in the description. You can consume them at your leisure. Because this guy is just like a master of chipping away at OP sanity. And <laughs> it's pretty fun to witness, honestly. So <laughs> I'm eager to get into it. So let's start with some plugs and disclaimers, and then we will dive right into some r slash Tales of Neckbeard's cringe. <laughs> Creepy stranger wanted me to go to his room to watch anime at a gaming festival. Bro, I think it's Burger Beard. <laughs> That's just a theory. Who really knows, honestly, because the Beardoverse is growing. <laughs> Long time lurker, first time poster, I apologize for any format errors. I only recently discovered these subs, and reading some of the stories reminds me of my own encounter, though I'm not sure if the guy counts as a neckbeard or not. We will be the judge of that, OP, yes indeed. <laughs> We've got it down to a science around here. <laughs> this was a few years ago at a gaming convention called the Insomnia Gaming Festival. I was 18 at the time, and I was with my sister for my first time attending the Bring Your Own Computer BYOC LAN party. On the second day, we were returning to the LAN hall after a busy day cosplaying with a new friend we'd met when this guy approached us. Neither me or my sister had seen him before, and it was clear from the smell that this guy had not showered in quite some time. Well, that's already a tick in the neckbeard box, isn't it? And at a gaming convention? I think it's safe to say he's a neckbeard. <laughs> He starts talking about the BYOC and asking me a load of questions about it. Like, was this my first time? Was I enjoying it? Things like that. He totally ignored my sister and my friend and only spoke to me. I have anxiety and my sister could see that I was uncomfortable, so she answered for me. We started to walk away and he followed us. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to lead him to our seats and PCs, so we went over to the bar instead. At this point, the guy suggests that I go with him to his room to watch some anime he thinks I might like. <laughs> it's hentai OP, run! <laughs> I can't remember what it was. I already know. <laughs> I politely refused, saying that I was hungry and I didn't feel too well. He then offers to drive us to McDonald's <laughs> and that my sister could come along if I didn't feel comfortable. At this point, I am close to having a panic attack and was struggling to breathe a little. The guy sees this and asks if I'm okay, moving closer to me and putting a hand on my shoulder. Not wanting to seem weak, I use the injury to my ribs that I had from work a few weeks before as an excuse. Which was mostly true, I mean, I was hurt pretty bad, I just didn't want to mention my anxiety because I've had people try to use it to manipulate me before. Because he kept touching me, the anxiety was just getting worse. So my sister finally pushes him away and said that she felt that I had to see the medic. My sister and friend took me to the medical staff and he again followed closely, constantly asking me if I was okay. <laughs> Do you want to go get some McDonald's? Are you okay? You know he's going to order them chicken tenders if he does go to McDonald's. <laughs> this has beard written all over it. He's, he's like completely ignoring social cues. Yeah, double stamp neck beard for reals. I spent half an hour in the room with just the medic. 
As my sister didn't want to leave our friend with that guy, I was given some painkillers for my rib and told that I needed to take it easy. When I came out, the guy was still there. <laughs> God. Uh, sister seemed to be getting quite pissed off with him. Of course, they asked what the medic had said, so I told them. The guy then suggested that I go with him to his room as it would be more comfortable than the tent me and my sister were sleeping in. We were sleeping in the indoor camping hall for the event, and again he mentioned the anime he was talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> no, a thousand times no. What is wrong with this dude? At this point, my sister snapped. She started yelling at him, saying that she wouldn't allow her younger, injured sister to go alone with a stranger. She very loudly told him to leave us alone, and we walked away, leaving him standing there with a shocked look on his face. Thankfully, we didn't see him again, but I spent most of the event on edge. Thankfully, the people we were sitting with in the BYOC hall were super nice, and they said they'd tell us if they saw him anywhere near us. I'm so glad they didn't follow you after that last interaction. This guy seems like the sort of dude that just takes kindness for weakness, you know? You didn't scream at him outright initially, <laughs> because that is kind of a breach of the social contract. And he's like, oh great, she's totally interested. Like, no bro, we're just trying to brush you off nicely. <laughs> but you can't let it be nice. And then you know he went home and got on the internet and he's like, Oh, women are such bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you made them do this, okay? Take a deep look inside yourself. Women are just super amazing at knowing other people's intentions. I mean, obviously, even in the story, I know what his intentions were, but that's how women keep themselves safe, you know? Most of the time, dudes are walking around oblivious because they know they can outmuscle any danger. But... Women generally need to have, like, the forethought to swerve danger before it gets near. You think this guy wouldn't, like, get in the car, pull a gun on both of them in a McDonald's parking lot? It's a real possibility, you know what I mean? Just an absolute creep. I'm so glad you were able to get out of that situation. Maybe next time, just scream at him outright. <laughs> like, I'm not here to talk to you! The quicker you can shut down the entire situation the better, and I'm glad that your sister was able to do that for you. Take notes. She seems like a real strong lady. I like her a lot. That's good big sister material, OP. And I'm super glad that you had her by your side in this situation. Anyways, I'm sure we'll get some more convention creeps in the coming days, but for now, we will jump right back into the beard of a thousand irritations. I think it's part number four. So let's do it. The Beard of a Thousand Irritations. The Great Girlfriend Shaming. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to part four. If you only just joined us and wanted to start at the beginning, you can find part one here. But actually, you won't find it there <laughs> because you can't click a link in a video. <laughs> but uh, the link is in the description, as I think I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so go check it out! In the last part of this story, I posted about how the biggest neck beard in my life, the beard of a thousand irritations, or Tabodi for short, almost never did any work on his own pet project. He's a sci-fi fan, working on his own original world, and has been hiring me, a writing coach, to help him with his world-building development. I'm letting off steam by writing about this because he really does have a knack for annoying me in a thousand different ways. I've changed a few details to protect both the innocent and the bearded. <laughs> in case you missed part one or two, here's our cast list. And I read the cast list previously, so we got OP, the beard of a thousand irritations, Emily, who is the beard's girlfriend. We've got Jay, who is the co-writer of the beard. Doesn't look like anything's changed there. So good, let's get into the meat. <laughs> this is the part of the series where I talk about Emily. Like I said in my cast list, I've barely spoken to Emily, and any time I've tried saying hi or starting a conversation in the past, it basically went nowhere. That wasn't a problem. She owed me precisely four-fifths of Fanny Adams, but... <laughs> Since I'm building the writing coach business to this day, 
I do like to reach out to anybody and everybody that I can. You never know where your next commission's coming from, after all. Too true. Tabodi mentioned his girlfriend from time to time. They had plans to move out of their parents' homes and make a home together in California. Bro. <laughs> I hope it's Northern California. Southern California is a bad place to start, I'm just gonna tell you for real. I always wondered what it would be like for the both of them. I couldn't imagine living with the Beard of a Thousand Irritations. Just doing a few hours of coaching time with him every week was absolutely exhausting. Never mind trying to negotiate bills and household chores, and if he made a good dad, then I would eat my hat. <laughs> uh, but then again, maybe in his own home, he'd grow up quickly. Though I doubt it. <laughs> Hope springs eternal and all that. <laughs> Hope in one hand, poop in the other. See which one fills up first. <laughs> one day I opened Telegram to find a stack of messages from Tabodi. And he was furious. He'd sent me a screenshot of an email from his girlfriend, Emily, where she had said, I told you a thousand times over the past month that I'm having a crisis with my religion. And as a part of that, I'm not comfortable having video call sex with you or doing erotic role play. You keep asking me to do it anyways. I love you, but I need you to stop asking and respect my boundaries. Now, if you're a normal, level-headed person, not thinking with your dick, you'd be like, wow, that's very forthright. I'm, I'm with you on this. I want to let you discover your beliefs and find something that makes you happy. Again, if you're a level-headed person, Tabodi is not that level-headed person. <laughs> Tabodi's slew of messages to me said, among other things, Look at this ice queen behavior. Ugh. How dare she? She doesn't care about me at all. He called her a prude and said he wouldn't be able to accept a relationship where they were living together but not having sex. Bro, I think you should consider yourself lucky that any woman on this planet <laughs> might possibly consider living with you. What the hell? <laughs> well, get to the sex part after, okay? <laughs> One step at a time. This was another one of those times that he crossed a line with me. I grew up in an abusive household with a misogynistic dad and three brothers who, let's just say they learned a lot from their dear old pappy. Quite a lot of that misogyny was around the idea that the only thing that girls were good for was bedroom stuff, and that it was naive of us to think that girls and boys or men and women could be friends. I felt very left out or left behind as a little girl and I never had a close relationship with any of my brothers who made it clear to me that my company quite simply wasn't worthwhile. We grew apart permanently anywhere from 10 to 15 years ago, depending on the brother. Damn, that is a bummer, dude. Talk about poisoning the well. As an adult, I've made several wonderful male friends, and I have a boyfriend who I'm best friends with, and those relationships have done a lot to help. Well, there's the, the silver lining, I suppose. I'm best friends with my wife, too. That's... That's who should be your best friend. It took me a while to get past the idea that no male would value me outside of my willingness to sleep with him, and because of that, I know how hard it can be for any girl to overcome it. Because of this, one of my pet hates is that women should earn my goodwill by spread their legs for me mentality. Young men get horny. I mean, I understand this, but I firmly believe that a man who wants sex needs to pursue it in a healthy way. Otherwise, he will damage his relationships with the girls and women around him. And that is going to bite him in the ass. I'm sure it's difficult to readjust if you grew up learning unhealthy attitudes towards whichever gender you prefer, and then find yourself hormone-addled, but once we get a little bit older, we all have a responsibility to learn to meet our desires in a way that doesn't damage other people and ideally doesn't damage ourselves either. I mean, I get what you mean, you know, like, you mean damage yourself mentally, but if you have a ball-busting fetish, then... <laughs> Go to town, as long as both parties are consenting. <laughs> By this time in my working relationship with the beard of a thousand irritations, I had already spent months dealing with his whining, supplicatory, victimy behavior. 
and Emily's comment about how he'd been trying to talk her around to giving him sex even though she didn't want to rang true. I was wary of Tabodi's manipulative tactics myself, and I was at least old and experienced enough to recognize what was going on and to realize that he was effectively paying me to tolerate him. <laughs> Suffice to say that I watched his behavior while he was paying me ultra carefully, and I paid attention to myself when I fell for his tactics so I could learn what to do differently next time. I think it probably took Emily a lot of fortitude to stand up to him like this, to tell him no in a way that he couldn't ignore it anymore. So I told him that she had every right to say no without any kind of backlash from him, and that if sex was that important to him, Maybe he should find a girl who actually wanted to do it with him. <laughs> he conceded that I was making sense, and then he asked me if he should break up with her. I did not take the bait. There was no way I was going to give him an answer to that. If I had, I'm pretty sure he would have considered me wholly responsible for anything that happened afterwards. Plus, I got vibes from the way that she talked that she probably wasn't actually ready to break up with him. I should say here that I'm no stranger to abusive relationships. I've been in a handful myself, and I've seen other people go through them. Enough so that I know there's no rushing an escape plan. <laughs> the abused person needs to decide to get out or to get help. I've tried helping friends before and, frankly, nearly got torn a new butthole just for trying. <laughs> Personal experience tells me it's the abused one who fights the hardest to stay in the relationship. Nevertheless, I wondered if I should reach out to Emily and offer her some kind of support. I'm ashamed to say that it took me a while to finish weighing this up. On the one hand, Tabodi was a paying customer, and if he found out I'd interfered with his relationship, he would probably stop working with me. But I didn't want to let that get in the way of me doing the right thing. On the other hand, as much as I wanted to offer her something, anything, that would show her that there was support available to her if she wanted it, my gut instinct was that she'd just turn it down and would probably tell Tabodi that I'd gotten in touch with her. In the end, I chose to wait a few weeks, since there was no imminent danger to her, and then I would send an anonymous message as if I'd heard something from somebody who knew someone. If I'd got the measure of Tabodi, then he'd probably told several people about Emily's betrayal. <laughs> that made it at least plausible then that at least one of the people he told that to had gossiped to a friend of theirs, which would make the source hard to trace. When I felt enough time had passed, I made an alternate account, and I messaged Emily to say that one of my friends had shown me a copy of the email, and I thought that it was best to tell her so. My aim was to make it clear that Tabodi had no regard for her privacy, and that somebody, somewhere, thought that it was wrong of him. Emily did reply to me, asking who showed me the email. I refused to say, and she named a person who I'd never heard of before, and asked me if it was them. I just said that I'd been asked not to reveal the person, and apologized. Tabodi also messaged me at that alternate account. Clearly, Emily had told him about my alternate's message, and he told incognito me that the email was nobody's business but theirs. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> but you still seem intent on sharing it around for yourself. <laughs> it's just when somebody else shares it, then you're like, oh, what's a breach of privacy? <laughs> My darling privacy. <laughs> when I went on to Telegram, there were several messages piled up from Tabodi. And for a moment, I panicked and wondered if he had traced it back to me somehow. Tabodi told me that my trust has been betrayed. Yes, he felt that his trust had been betrayed, not his girlfriend's. And he asked me if I'd showed that email to anyone. I denied it and asked if he'd shown it to anybody else. Reader, he'd shown it to five different people. <laughs> I was horrified for Emily and I asked him how she felt about the situation. He said, She felt hurt and said I trusted other people too much, but <laughs> she forgave me. Tabodi told me he was asking all five people who had shared the email and that he hadn't done it to be vindictive and had only done it so he could work out whether or not he was overreacting. <laughs> 
You are, bro. What's wrong with you? Just go jerk it. Bust that nut right in the toilet where it belongs. <laughs> Do not let your DNA infest this world. <laughs> uh, I said he sounded angry at me, so I didn't think he was seeking information, but just letting off steam. And he conceded that, yeah, that was true. I didn't think there was much more I could say after that. And I crossed my fingers that he got the message that betraying his girlfriend like that was unacceptable. That he wouldn't get any sympathy from me. And I seriously hope not from the others that he shared it with either. And that maybe, just maybe, Emily got a little bit closer from walking away from Tabodi. TLDR. Ugh, oh, what an absolute mess. <laughs> I think OP did go about it in the right way, you know? You definitely should let somebody know if uh, things are being shared about them that they didn't necessarily want shared. Girl code, bro code, whatever gender you identify with, that's the code, <laughs> okay? And then it's just so mind-boggling that he would get upset that the, the letter was shared to somebody else, when really you're sharing it with a writing coach who you presumably only know online. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you he shared it with more than five people. And if he didn't share it with more than five people, then he probably shared it with all the people he knows, which is five people, because he's disgusting and horrible to be around. The more we get into this, the more I really do start to develop some hate for this dude, you know? At first it was just kind of like, haha, he's a lazy dude, he doesn't do any work on his own sci-fi world. Haha, ha, he thinks it's going to be a success when really he's <laughs> had like no hand in it aside from facilitating and taking advantage of other people around him. But manipulating your girlfriend, bro, sharing what she shared with you in confidence to other people that you hardly know on the basis of like seeing if you're overreacting or not. You're definitely overreacting, okay? That woman does not belong to you, all right? It's her choice whether or not to have sex with you. If I had it my way, she would never have sex with you. She'd never talk to you again. This guy might seem like a big dumb oaf, but obviously he is smart enough to manipulate people at least to some extent, which uh, I really hope ends up just, just biting him in the ass. I hope that everything falls apart for him. I wasn't completely gassed up against this guy. I thought he was just more of a laugh, but... As is the case with most beards, the deeper you look, the more disgusting it gets. And I really hope that this story doesn't end too horribly for Emily, but for Tabodi, bro, just <laughs> whatever. I hope his life is the shambles by the end. Ugh. But anyways, I hope you will let me know what you thought about this episode. Maybe like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. Perhaps share it around. If you know somebody that needs a laugh, just deliver them some Red X. It has been scientifically proven to take them blues away. Although, uh, we're still in clinical testing, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I also hope you check out the links in the description. We got Wifey's channel. I told you we did Bad Women's Anatomy over there, Mr. and Mrs. Red X. I hope you check it out. We've also got my Amazon affiliate link. If you're buying some stuff on Amazon, maybe buy it through there. Then I get broke off a little bit. That's pretty sweet. We've also got the Teespring if you're trying to rock the merch. Yes, indeed. And my personal subreddit, r slash redxreads, which neither of these posts came from today, but I do refer to it quite a little bit. Additionally, we've got the social medias with the Twitters and the Discords and the Facebooks. Oh, and how could I forget my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons? You're seeing some names on the screen right now, and I would like to thank them all. But especially, Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Fair, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Candy Sora, DigiNC, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Miss Monday, Silent Revolver, JM Coon, Leon Embers, TSM Kirby, Redwind, Synaptic Boomstick, Jerry, Staples, Yeet! And Davindra! Thank you guys so much for helping me to fight back against that demonetization monster. We had a little bit yesterday. Luckily, the video got reviewed pretty quick, so I was able to drop that nice guy's writing you lap. But yeah, from time to time, they say no. They're like, this is not acceptable for advertisers. I'm like, okay, bro, whatever. So what I'm saying is, yeah, the harder YouTube tightens its noose, <laughs> the more I'm relying on my patrons. So if you can join them in supporting, that is absolutely massive. I thank you so, so much in advance. But if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. 
I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really, the views is how my beard stays so buttered. <laughs> In order to join us again, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, super important, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe uh, watching some more Red X. Hey, I like that. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.